Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. You know what I've been thinking about lately? The water cooler, or that spot in the office where we used to gather and chat. A lot of people have been missing that in this hybrid world. And while I haven't seen a water cooler in a bit, I have had the opportunity to facilitate some virtual listening sessions that have sure felt like water cooler moments. And I'm hearing some insights from employees across industries that I think could be useful for all of us to hear. So today, I'm going to share some of my favorites with you and hope you find something useful in them. In the past couple of years, we've learned a lot about working remotely or in a hybrid fashion. We've figured out how to sustain productivity, how to run meetings, have brainstorming sessions, and so much more. But for many of us, something still feels like it's missing. And it's that chatter that happens by the water cooler. And I don't just mean the casual, hey, how was your weekend catch up, but also that informal conversation that reminded us that we're not alone in the experiences that we're having as we navigate this still uncertain and unprecedented moment. Part of my work is to help companies capture and understand the voices of their employees, to learn what their experiences are, where there are opportunities for change, and what solutions or interventions may be the most impactful. And I do this by conducting listening sessions, essentially focus groups designed to unlock employee sentiment, which I then synthesize and feedback to leadership teams. And what I've noticed in recent months is that employees are beginning to use these sessions to almost replicate those missing water cooler conversations. Participants are not just offering feedback to their leaders during these sessions, but they're also validating each other's experiences while sharing actionable strategies that anyone can pick up and use. In case you're missing your own water cooler moments, today I'd like to share with you some of my favorite insights and strategies I've had the good fortune of hearing in the past several months. Whether you're a leader or just a citizen of your organization, there's something actionable in here for you to take away. The first insight is that taking breaks must be normalized. Burnout, exhaustion, overwhelm, they're all still present. Companies know this, and they're preaching the importance of taking breaks. But telling people to take breaks in the face of back-to-back meetings that run all day is not helpful. So what is helpful? According to my listening sessions, employees want to see break-taking get normalized, highlighted, talked about, even applauded. In one session, I heard about a leader who started kicking off their team meetings by sharing something fun they did on a recent break, like watching a cat video, and then asking others in the room what they plan to do during their next break. This simple practice made it not only acceptable to take a break, but almost unacceptable not to, because then what would you have to share? So give this a try. Don't sneak in a break and pretend it never happened. Share it with the world, reminding them that you've recharged and now you're ready to dive in with a clearer head than before. Chances are you'll be a trendsetter. The next insight is that fun is in the eye of the beholder. Know what's not fun for a recovering alcoholic? One participant in a listening session asked. Mandatory happy hours, on Zoom or in person. This comment took the conversation down a rabbit hole of recognition that too many leaders are trying too hard to mandate fun. While there may be legitimate value in having a team come together in a casual format, just to connect without agenda or formal objective, there is also a need to give people space to find or make their own fun. This group advocated for giving everyone an hour a week to do their own thing, be it participate in a lunch and learn or take an online course, or read a book, or go on a run, or do a bit of philanthropy, all during the workday. Being serious about fun means making time for it on the clock. That is a true commitment to wellness. So get the ball rolling by asking your teammates what their version of fun is. Are there any themes running through? If so, ask your boss if you can take the lead on hosting a session. Maybe a book club or a cooking class, not a happy hour, that everyone can participate in. And if no theme jumps out, then try suggesting a free hour Friday, during which everyone gets to do something of their own choosing, and then shares a 30-second highlight during your next team meeting. Giving team members space to find their own fun and then sharing highlights with the team helps people manage their energy while also driving team connection. The next insight is we must respect each other's choices. There are companies who have stated no politics in the workplace policies, but the truth is that these days, nearly everything from sports to healthcare to education feels political. Instead, what I'm hearing in these sessions is that employees want to call for respect, 
rather than a ban on politics. To come into the office or not, to travel internationally or not, to support certain streaming services or professional sports leagues or brands or not, it's all a matter of personal and complicated choice. We're having to make choices and assess risk and values at nearly every turn. And we're all kind of exhausted. So we don't want to expend more energy on hiding or defending or justifying our choices. So start by role modeling respect. Recognize that everyone is making so many decisions right now. Don't challenge or question them. Just live and let live. And my final insight for today is that inclusion is bigger than just an invitation. Inclusion and belonging are coming up a lot these days. Teams are recognizing in many cases, there is more diverse representation around the table. But what they want now is to hear more of those diverse voices. Bringing diverse talent in the door is table stakes. The real question is, what are we doing to give voice to that talent, to hear their insights, ideas, questions, and concerns? Here are some of the suggestions I've heard mentioned in these sessions to drive a greater sense of inclusion. Seek out opinions and feedback early when you're working on an idea. If you wait until your plan is fully baked, the invitation for feedback seems disingenuous. Connect with employee resource groups if your company has them. These are typically employee-led groups designed to be forums for team members with a shared characteristic like race, gender, life phase, etc. And invite their perspectives early and often to help shape your thinking. And network regularly and intentionally with people in different parts of the organization so your perspective naturally starts to expand. The point is to recognize that diversity is a solid start, but that inclusion is the name of the game. Tap into the breadth of wisdom and perspectives available. I hope something here has left you feeling less alone and maybe even with some clarity on an action you'll take. If you have an insight to add to the list, I'd love to hear it. Drop me a note at modernmentor at quickanddirtytips.com and let me know. I hope you'll join me next week for another great episode. Until then, you can follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out my website at leadabovenoise.com or follow me on the Modern Mentor podcast page on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for listening and have a successful week. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Farabend with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our assistant manager is Emily Miller, and our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. Mm-hmm.